If you are conducting or designing training for a virtual classroom, then you know that one of the biggest challenges is how do you keep people's attention? Hey, it's Jeff with yourlearningcareer.com. I have been delivering and designing training for the virtual classroom for a very long time now, many, many years. Actually started doing it way before the pandemic. I'm gonna share with you my favorite techniques for getting people's attention and keeping it when you are conducting training in the virtual classroom. The first thing I encourage you to do, whether you are the trainer or you are the designer of the training, is to get familiar with whatever software you are using for your virtual classroom. So I'm talking about things like Zoom, WebEx, Microsoft Teams. There are a whole bunch of different programs out there. And your first responsibility as a trainer or as a training designer is you gotta get familiar with that software, meaning you need to know what it can do. Does it have the ability to have breakout rooms? Are you able to have a whiteboard? Can you annotate on slides? Like you need to know these things and you need to get in there and practice using them because as the trainer, of course, you're gonna be the one facilitating everything. So you've gotta know how to do that. But also if you're the instructional designer, you've gotta, you're gonna design for the virtual classroom. So you need to be very familiar as well so you can build your activities around the capabilities of your software. So that's the first thing I would tell you is get in there and get to know your software. Number two, show yourself on camera. Now I know a lot of us aren't really comfortable with that, myself included. I really don't like being on camera in a meeting or in a training session. And if you are like that, here's what I would tell you. You don't necessarily have to be on camera the entire time. You should at least be on camera for your introduction because you want to have some kind of, you know, one of the things we lose when we go into the virtual classroom is that, that connection that you get when you're in person with each other. And so uh, it's really important to take advantage of any kind of opportunity where you can really humanize yourself, humanize the training. And one way to do that is to appear on camera so that your participants can see you um, and feel like they, they get to know you a little bit better. So number three, let's talk about chat. Chat is, of course, probably one of the most common features in any of the meeting software, whichever one you're using, chances are it has some kind of chat functionality. Now, chat is great. The only thing is most facilitators, most presenters really don't use it very effectively. What I mostly see is this, blah, 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 lecture, 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 and then at the end, okay, if you have questions, put them in the chat. Or they might at the beginning say, hey, as I go through this, if you have questions, put them in the chat. And that's how people use chat. Now. That's fine. I mean, you can certainly use chat to let your participants ask questions and you answer questions. But what I would tell you to do as either the presenter or the training or instructional designer is to be more intentional with chat. Don't just use it as a Q&A device. Like you can really use it to create different kinds of interactivity. And let me give you an example. All right, so here is a slide that I created, and this is for a time management course. And what I would do with this is I'd put this up, actually, as people are coming into the class, I'll put this up at the beginning. And as people come in, I'll say, hey, as you're joining the call, answer this question and put it in chat. What is your best time management tip? And then people start putting things into chat. And now, as the facilitator, I have all kinds of material that I can use. So as people chat things in, I might say, oh, hey, Charlotte, that's a great idea. Um, how does that work for you? And you start getting some conversation going. And then the other thing that's beautiful about a slide like this is I can refer back to it later because chances are 
some of the tips that they're going to put in the chat will probably be tips that I'm going to cover later in the training. So it's a great callback device because I can, whenever I get to that section in the training, I can say, oh yeah, and, and if you recall, Ryan said blah, 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 which is what we're about to talk about now. So this is a great way to use chat. You're, and, and again, like I said, you want to be very intentional. Don't just use chat one time. Like you can have several of these kinds of slides where you're asking questions, you're asking for participation in the chat, or they can shout it out, you know, however, however you want to do it. But you're using chat in a very intentional way and not just for them to ask questions. Number four, Another great functionality that most of the software will have, whiteboards. When we teach in a traditional classroom, in person, we usually have a whiteboard or we have, you know, like a dry erase board. Uh, we might have flip charts, but we have things where we can go and we can write things down. So um, like a brainstorm, you can use, uh, parking lots, right? We, we oftentimes in a training class will say, oh, if you have a question and I don't have the answer, I'll put it in the parking lot, right? And then we also have group activities where maybe we break the class up into small groups and they write things down on the flip chart together to collaborate. Most of the virtual classroom softwares will have some kind of whiteboard and there's all kinds of cool stuff. So all those things I just said that you would do on a flip chart or a dry erase, you can do on the whiteboard. And by the way, I'm going to link to a couple of videos here. I actually have two videos. I have a video demonstrating the Zoom whiteboard and I have a video demonstrating the Microsoft Teams whiteboard to give you more ideas on how you can use the whiteboard. But a whiteboard in your virtual classroom you can do all kinds of really great activities and collaboration uh, with that. Number five is annotation. Annotation is where you allow the people in your class to write, type, or draw on your slide. So again, this is something you can plan for if you are, you know, particularly if you are the one designing the class, you're the instructional designer, or maybe you're both the trainer and the training designer, um, you can plan for annotation throughout your training. And here's one that I like. This is the this is like a really super basic annotation idea and that is to put a map of some kind up on a slide like I have here and as people are entering the room you can say hey where are you from put a dot put a check put an arrow whatever and this is a way to generate conversation while you're waiting for the class to start now sometimes so that's a really easy basic way now another way I like to use annotation I like to do silly things sometimes so especially if I'm doing a class that is multi-day so I'm gonna be with the participants for a while I may do something silly like this I may say hey everybody I know you we talked about Harry Potter yesterday and a lot of you are fans so I thought it'd be cool to ask you what house would you would the sorting hat put you in and then again let them annotate they can circle star whatever they want to do um, but I might have a slide like this and you can I mean the thing about this kind of slide you can have so much fun you can be really creative think of all kinds of fun questions and put them out and let people annotate on the slide now to be a little more serious if I want to stick with the topic at hand so let's go back to our time management class well, then I might put a slide like this up and have them annotate on here. So this is a continuum where I might ask, okay, everybody, let's pause for a minute. I just want to ask you all, do you regularly use effective time management techniques? Let me know. And let's do this anonymously. Just put a mark and we won't know who's saying what. And then they'll mark up the slide. Some might say not so much. Some might say yes often. Um, but it's just a way for you as the facilitator to gauge how your audience is feeling. And again, it's a way to check in. It's a way to get their attention, get them to participate. But things like this, where you, you build slides like this that allow for annotation, 
this is a great, this is one of my favorite techniques. Number six, you definitely want to know if your software can do breakout rooms. Again, most of them do. Zoom, WebEx, Teams, I know they, they all have the ability to create breakout rooms. A lot of times when people are new to virtual classrooms, they are worried or they complain about, oh, in my, you know, when we did this, in person, we used to break the class up into teams and we did these uh, group activities and I don't see how I could do that in a virtual classroom. But you can, that's the great news. With the breakout rooms, you can do group activities. And what's great is just like in the in-person class, in an in-person class, I might walk around from group to group and check in and see how they're doing. You can do the same thing in the virtual classroom. You can pop in and out of the break rooms. You can go in, you can listen, you can ask questions. And then what's really cool, I know in a lot of the um, breakout rooms that we've done, we were also able to allow the people in the breakout rooms to write on a whiteboard or write on a slide that they've annotated on. And we're able to bring that information back into the main room and do a debrief. Now, it does take, you've got to do some work ahead of time because you've got to get yourself familiar with the breakout room, how they work. Um, there's little ins and outs that you need to figure out, right? Uh, depending on your software, but it is so well worth it. Because again, instead of just doing this long, boring lecture with no participation, you can have these really great dynamic group activities when you use the breakout rooms. Okay, and my final tip for keeping people's attention in your virtual classroom, games, games and activities. There are so many great games and activities. Now, uh, one that I will throw out there for you is one that I love to use in person, I love to use virtually, game shows. I love game shows. And here is an example of a game show built in PowerPoint. So you can certainly do PowerPoint based game shows like this. This is a Jeopardy style game show. By the way, I have a video showing you how to build your own Jeopardy style game show in PowerPoint. I will link to that here and in the description so you can check that out. But yeah, game shows are a lot of fun. They're, they're a fun way to review and give information and see how people are remembering the information. In addition to game shows that you build in PowerPoint, there are some really cool game-like activities that you can do with software like this. This is called Kahoot and it's uh, kahoot.com and it's a free software. You actually can build your own little quiz, and people use their mobile phones to answer the questions. So this is a lot of fun. It's a pretty easy thing to set up. So this is something that you could check out and see how you might fit a Kahoot game um, into your training. This could be a lot of fun. And then one other thing with um, talking about games and activities, I actually have a video where I give you five, not one, not two, five activities that you can play in your virtual classroom. So I'm going to link to that video here. I'm going to link to it in the description. So I've got all kinds of great videos uh, here on the channel for you to check out. That is what this channel is all about. You know, people who are in learning professions or people who want to be in learning professions. So I've got all kinds of great videos and resources here on the channel. So if you like that sort of thing, be sure to subscribe as well. All right, so those are my top tips for keeping people's attention in your virtual classroom. If you have some good tips, things that are working for you in your virtual classrooms, I would love to hear about it in the comments. So please let us know, help other people and uh, share your secrets for um, virtual classroom training. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time.